welcome to the Red Booth Show. Tonight's episode features Vince Casso. He's one of the actors on a show called The Guild. So watch our interview. Wait, I was just standing there with your staff up your ass. Sorry. Take her ball. Get her rule number four. No finger pointing. She didn't come to my house and do whatever she wants with her finger. Blades! Guild rule number 12! Ooh, Daddy Guild Leader's so angry. You guys ever get the feeling we play this game too much? Yeah, so then I web surf. Look, some chicken china squirted on an 18 pound baby. Check the link. Damn! Attendance as of late has been less than stellar and his attitude worse. Good on. No, he's like the retarded cousin of the guild. The right thing to do is let him play tag, even though he runs around hitting people. Yeah, Claire, Claire is right, in, in theory. Um. Hey, I thought I smelled nerd stink coming from this booth. Hey, Blades, my man. You guys have met before? I'm Clara. I'm old enough to be your mom. <laughs> and that doesn't spring me, but you other ladies. I'll be in the paper as a suicide whisperer, get invited on Ellen, we'll dance! Clara, I need real advice here. Okay, right. Are you hot for him? Uh, enough. Enough? Oh, wrong answer. This is some juicy lady talk I showered into. Ew! Oh. Oh. Gross blades! Uh, cover that up! All right, my opinion. He'll take you, used and all, but a guy's not gonna pass on anything with a lady hole. Oh, uh, can you pass me my mousse, my cologne, spray, vanishing cream, baby oil, and rose water? Ah, uh, what? Forget I said anything. No way. <laughs> I think I need pirate eyeliner. Hey, Vince. Thanks for coming on the show. Happy to be here. Yes, this is really cool. I actually have some very... Uh, I'm looking forward to asking you lots of questions. Do that. Yes. <laughs> well, okay, so... You're on a really like awesome YouTube show that has grown and grown and grown from just short little clips to... Yeah, uh, YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Xbox Live for a long time. Everywhere uh, you can find something on the internet, we saturated. That's right. And in case any of you out there don't know about it, it's called The Guild, which is basically, from what I can tell, and I don't know if you're allowed to say this or not, but it sounds kind of like people who are playing World of Warcraft. Yeah, well, the, the whole thing was inspired initially by World of Warcraft. We obviously couldn't say the name in the show, but right. the whole idea is the creator of the show, the writer's name is uh, Felicia Day is her name. Right. And she had played WoW for about uh, something like two years prior to writing the show. And that's, in terms of World of Warcraft time, she'd been playing it for the bulk of its existence at that point. Right. Uh, and she wanted to take that and use it to... Uh, produce something that she could be in that's something she's passionate about and control her own destiny as an actress. And we all got together and made this fun thing. So were you were there in the beginning when she was first like coming up with the ideas and stuff like that. How did you guys meet? I came in actually just as the center audition process. Okay. So she mocked up the show. She came up with the whole idea for the show. And she knew a couple other people who she did improv with. And she wrote parts for them. Those parts are uh, uh, Vork and Zabu for Jeff Lewis and Sandy Parik. Then she held auditions for the rest of us. And that's just how I came in. My agent gives me a call, says he has an audition for a 30-minute pilot, which is what it was originally, right. a 30-minute pilot. Came in, they liked it, and then from there we decided to go with the web series route. That's cool. And the rest is history. <laughs> now, let's see. So when you first started on the show, mm. You were kind of, well, more of like the teenager with like kind of longer hair. And I don't think there's any other teenagers in the guild. It's mainly like you're the one. No, I'm the kid. You're the kid. <laughs> right, yeah. That was a while ago now. I was, I think I just turned 15 at the wow. time. And yeah, I had like shoulder length hair. Yeah. Uh, the whole deal. I was, you know, gangly and all these things. Uh, so I was the, the child of the show. And that's how they played it off. Even, you know, six seasons in, when I'm a lot older, I'm still like a 15-year-old kid in the show. And that's, that's sort of how they base the character around, that punky, kind of perverted, teenage boy kind of deal. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. OK, so when you guys first started the show, like, when was that? Oh, boy. OK, so we 
did the current final season of the, of the series uh, close to a year and a half, two years ago now. That was season six. Yeah. Uh, we started the show approximately six years prior to that. So you know what? It's been a, I had a long night. I am not doing the math quite yet right now, but it's been a while. We've had this show running for some time. It's like the early 2000s, I guess. It's kind of. Mid, late, some, there was a year involved. It was one of those years. I can say I that for remember, certain. I remember, because World of Warcraft was really big at that time. Right. I, I think that's when it's like, when it really sort of blew up. And so it would make sense that that's part of why I would get such notoriety, you know, like during that time. Whatever was approximately eight years ago from right now, that's it. Okay, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I don't know what year it is. <laughs> Whatever. I still feel like it's like the early 2000s. It just, it shouldn't be. We're as close to 2030 as we are to 1998. And that is crazy. That's really weird. <sighs> that kind of boggles my mind. Anyway. Wow, so so this is kind of cool because basically, like your whole you know kind of adult early adult life has all been being part of the guild. Oh yeah, yeah. And that was a crazy experience being that young and being thrown in something like that because the show took off like yeah, crazy, totally, massively successful, massively popular, and we then took that and leveraged it into uh, appearing at conventions appearing and doing uh, the signings would have you all over the place and people would just turn out in droves. Like you would go to Comic-Con and Oh yeah, like we've done yeah. Comic-Con like I think five or six times. Um, every year that we had the show running, we'd appear. Uh, Comic-Con, BlizzCon, Gen Con, uh, uh, Denver Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con, there's uh, Emerald City Comic-Con, there's a con in Calgary we'd go to. Uh, all over the country, all over the world, we'd appear at these things. Uh, BlizzCon is one of my favorites in California. And, uh, BlizzCon? Yeah, it's it's the convention for Blizzard Entertainment, who does World of right, Warcraft. Right, right, okay. It's their convention. I love it. I love, I've always been a huge fan of Blizzard games and everything they do. But we'd appear at these things, we have like, you know, a two-hour wait for our line. We have lines that wrap around the building multiple times. Uh, it was amazing what it turned into. Absolutely crazy. Oh my god, that's so cool. Must have been, like, super exciting for how, how quickly it took off. Yeah, and we go in, I mean, for the most part, we're not expecting anything. We're not anticipating it'll be at all successful. We're just sort of doing it, and it's fun. We don't have anything in mind as to where it's going to go, uh, but... Do you help, like, part of the writing process? Are you, like, throwing... Do you guys all sort of collaborate? The way or? it works is Felicia will write out the, the entire season. She'll crank it out. She'll go to Hawaii for a week and just crank the whole thing out or what have you. And we'll then all come in, we'll meet at her house, and we'll have a sit down, a table read of the entire uh, season, all in one go. And during the table read, the whole season is written, but we have all the freedom in the world to riff and to put things in, and the script always changes mm -hmm. from that. People contribute ideas, dialogue changes, entire scenes will switch around and whatnot, because she creates that foundation, but it's, it is a collaborative process, the director, Everyone involved, for the most part, down from the PAs to the production, are in large part comedians or improv artists. So we have a lot of people just throwing ideas in there, and it really polishes the show. It must be hard not to just be in total hysterics the entire time you're reading. That's the thing is, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they learned that they shouldn't put me in a scene with other live people too often. <laughs> We, two people on the show who probably did the most improv, that's Jeff Lewis and Sandy Parikh. They have a long improv background. They've known Felicia for years. They did improv with her. Hammer Don't Hurt Him is their little troupe. Funny as hell. We Do initially... They still perform? Or? Oh, yeah, once oh, in wow. a while. Oh, cool. uh, the shows are just out of this world. Uh, but for the most of the first season, we were all behind our computers. It was all like we're talking to each other through the game. Right, like the webcam shot or whatever. Yeah, right. the facing us, we were one of the first to do that. This was a long, long time ago. Uh, and that was it. We didn't interface directly with each other, so I could keep my cool pretty easily. Then in season two, we had a, at least half the season was us all in one space. So I had a lot of scenes with Jeff and Sandeep in particular, just the three of us, and I would just ruin take after take after take. We'd be 20 takes in, and we got one that was maybe okay, but I'm just laughing my ass off, and all the others, I can't help it. <laughs> they were so funny. Eventually, I began to be okay with it, but yeah, it was, it was an incredible experience because just that much funny all the time. We all learned a lot from it and grew a lot from it. Wow, that's really cool. 
I mean, what are you guys going to be doing now? Are you like working on the next season already? And well, we did season six, cool. which was our biggest and best. Uh, and, that, and that's the one that's on Netflix and... They all are. Everything's all on Netflix. Yeah. Okay. We got Netflix, Hulu, all over the place. Yeah. Uh, you can buy DVDs. We have, we have the mega set and this giant book that goes with it. Uh, but uh, from that season, that was our, our biggest season, and that was sort of our send-off for the show. Felicia didn't want to have the show have a permanent end. She didn't want it to be completely final and give us some room to revisit it in the future if we wanted to. But... For all intents and purposes, it is over at the moment. Really? Yes. From yeah. there, we all branched out. I mean, Felicia opened up an entire channel on YouTube, uh, The Geek and Sundry, this massive content network that she runs. She has shows there with a ton of great people. I mean, one of the most popular shows is with Will Wheaton uh, called Tabletop, okay. which has itself been a massive success. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And uh, Sandeep is producing his shows. I've been doing a lot of writing, voiceover, uh, and uh, been getting into production now myself. So we all just grew out from that. The opportunities that that show afforded us and the people we met through it have been more valuable than anything else. Yeah, completely. I mean, it established your your career as, you know, a huge internet entertainment team, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah, and also if you're helping to come up with stories and helping to do writing and things like that, then that's that's got to be you must have a lot more that you want to do. Oh yeah, like absolutely. Like creating more projects, com other comedies and things like that. Totally. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, we've all been really busy with all kinds of stuff and we all have been just generally creative people uh, and since new media, since web TV what have you is a very, it's still even emerging force uh, and is inherently just very, it caters to very creative types. We all from this came out and said, now we want to make our own stuff. That yeah. was sort of the impetus. Um, and so we've been doing that. For me, a lot of it, I mean, I took a little bit of time off. I started a business. I've been running that. But now it's just been doing lots of voiceover work, games and cartoons and whatnot. Uh, I love playing all kinds of characters. I've been writing a lot. I'm, can you do different voices and stuff? I can do all kinds of voices. I actually do, uh, I, I've done games, I've done cartoons. I also do live radio shows. So they'll have me on. You kind on of have a radio voice. A little bit. Yeah, you kind of do. But could you do like some one of the cartoon voices that you've done? Oh, let's see. Uh, well, for the uh, <laughs> for the shows, I mean, sometimes they'll bring me in. I'll sometimes do a lead, and so I just sort of use my own standard voice. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe they bring me in for some little character, this little uh, Irish man who's very manic and is very out of control, and what have you like that. And I'll do something crazy like that. Or I'm playing this big bubba tapper guy. <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So I have fun. I play sometimes between five and ten characters per show. Wow. Uh, different characters. I'm talking to myself for yeah. half the show. Um, and all that kind of stuff. I love that because I can only play so much physically. Yeah. You look the way you do. Yeah. And that's it. You have a certain, you know, thing that you fit. Basically. Yeah. Right. But if you can do stuff to your voice, you can play absolutely anything in an animated medium, be it a video game or a cartoon or what have you. So I've been angling a lot toward that, and that's been a great source of fun. That's awesome. What, are there any cartoons that you can mention that you've been? Right now, they're all in development. Um, there's a couple that are in pre-pre-pre-pre-production. So I had the producers reach out to me and say, hey, we're making this. We'd like to include it. I said, fine. And then it sort of goes quiet for a while. Others are, I'm currently recording for them. And I still, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say, uh, but a lot of it, yeah, it's just in development. And it, it was kind of a learning experience, actually, because as a consumer of media, of cartoons and games, I'm like, great, I have this finished product, and it's awesome. And I didn't really think about how long it takes to make one of these things. And it's a, an incredible amount of work, an incredible amount of time that goes into these. Yeah. I've had projects uh, with these guys, some producers who, that have been gestating for uh, years in some cases. Yeah. So it's, it moves, but it takes some doing. And that's something I've learned along the way. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the cool things about YouTube and projects like that where you have a lot of web, web series um, you know, clips and things is that you kind of can get through it quickly and make something and make, I mean, obviously there is a lot of preparation as well, but I think like compared to like feature films or other projects like that, those ones take so much longer to create and to plan for and oh, yeah. build up. So you get to see it like, you get that gratification of not having to wait for so long and wait for all this distribution. You can just put it up on the internet and you can just see it. Absolutely. 
And that's actually, that is one of the cool things about new media is there's very little that's immediately expected of you. You don't have to go into it with a really high production value. It doesn't have to be something really incredibly luxe or what have you. It just has to be fun to watch. And you can do that on a lot of different budgets. It doesn't require money to be fun. And that much is very equal opportunity as far as new media goes. So that's why I like to work in new media. It's why a lot of us like to work in new media is it's a fairly level playing field and there's a lot of room just to have fun with it and do something you like. What would you say is like advice for people who want to start doing stuff like that, like to be able to get into like the production situation? side of things or acting or? Um, yeah, let's say someone has an idea for a show. They want to create a show or, or something like that. Well, the, the sort of the tactic that we took with the Guild, uh, very initially, Felicia's idea was, I go out on auditions all the time and I don't get picked because they found some prettier redhead or they found some this, some that, I have too nerdy a look or what have you. She's constantly at the whim of other people and she wasn't happy with that. So she wanted to make something for herself. Initially, if I'm correct, she was trying to think about like what could she make that would catch on, what could she make that could be popular, that could get out there and be um, a good show. But then it turned into, at the advice of a friend of hers named Kim Evey, who produced the show, The Guild, as well, uh, make something that you are personally passionate about. It has to come from something that you like, that you're interested in, and do it really well. Yeah. And that's how this all came about, because she's playing all day, every day. She's playing World of Warcraft, and she's thinking, it has to be worth something. I have to use this for something, or it's just completely wasted time. And so she did it. She knows the game so well, so she made something based off of the people that she had actually met in the game, people she had actually played with in the game. So my first, the first rule of new media, of production and creativity in this field, is you, it has to come from the heart. It has to be sincere. Otherwise, it's not going to be very good, or you won't stick with it for very long. Yeah. You've got to make it because you love it, because you are passionate about it. And if you do that and you're willing to work, because it's a crap load of work, you can make something happen. We started the guild with no budget, we borrowed equipment, and we accepted donations via our website. We didn't even get a lot, we got some. But we made it, we made the guild. Every few months we would crank out one episode. We just made them as we were able to. You know, we called in favors for cast and crew and all these kinds of things. But then, People liked it. We had a niche. We had a market that we could serve with this. We had those gamers, the nerd geek community who just loved it. Well, they, I mean, that's like some people's other life, you know? Like, oh, yeah. Like, that's a huge deal to them, so. <laughs> and then by the time season two rolls around, we have Xbox and we have Sprint. We have these guys wanting to sponsor us, and then now we can really do it on a higher standard and with much better equipment and all these bells and whistles. So don't have to have before you can do. Don't feel the need to have a lot of money. Don't feel the need to have all this great equipment or all this anything before you can actually get started. You just have to start doing it and get going with it. And learn as you go, because that's a huge part of this. Well, I can tell you that I, I can identify a lot with that. And um, like this show, for example, is an indie show that has very much gone along that way. Like People help out. People believe in doing the show and they come and do it and it's just gotten bigger and bigger. But you know, the thing is that I think making it so that it's easily watchable online so everybody can see it is like one of the key factors that I think helped your show spread like so, so quickly, you know? And you started from humble beginnings and now you own your own rustic diner. <laughs> and it's, it's fabulous where you've come. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Service is really slow here though, I gotta oh, yeah, say it's I know. awful. We're still waiting on the food. I gotta ask, am I like the 50th person to make that joke? Or no, oh, really? Okay, you're good. Not. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm a little bit original. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yes, I know. We were actually thinking of having a waitress, you know, come and serve food and maybe you could eat. But then you'd have like food stuck yeah, in your like teeth. I'd be like trying to talk to you and then, you know, French fries would be flying out and I don't know. And you know that, you know, the, the more popular the show gets, everyone's just going to be like frame by frame to find all those bits of oh, lettuce and crap in your teeth. <sighs> and then the as freeze frame and then, oh, yeah. yeah. So don't, maybe not. Maybe yeah. it's not such a good idea. <laughs> There's milkshakes actually, two milkshakes maybe, I don't know. There you go. <laughs> so I get a, a production credit now on this show, right? Definitely. Awesome, good. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, 
on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. Well, so um, what do you think your next like big project is that you're trying to go for? Like you said, you're starting a business. Does that have to do with this? Not so much, no. I, I started that uh, several years ago now. I do advertising. I do a lot of online advertising. Uh, and that was because, oh, the, the two sides of it, so I guess it kind of does involve this a bit, is one of the talents I think is great to invest in as an actor, as anyone creative, really anyone in general, but especially for us who need to self-promote, is the ability to get your name out there and to advertise, to promote, to market. Yep all those types of things. And it's the one talent that I see people so sorely lacking. They have no idea how to do it. Uh, so I wanted to invest the time and develop the means to do that for myself. And also, you can make some good money at it in the meantime, so that helps as well. Uh, and the second aspect is, like I said, it does give you money. It allows you to not have to worry about certain other things. It gives you some capital you can use to actually fund a little bit of a something, to just start something, get it off the ground a little bit. Makes things easier, so it worked out. And that's, that's, uh, that's what I've been doing. Now, because that was my main thing for like two years, three years, now I really have been reinvesting in the creative. And it's been all about, I'm, I've, I've been talking to a lot of producers lately, getting my ideas pitched for shows. Uh, I'm sitting on about 15 different pilots. Uh, and I have a lot that of- That you, you have the ideas for, you mean? Yes. Wow. So I have a lot of different things I'd like to shop around that I've been talking to people about. And it's now just about ma making my name as a producer, making my name as a content creator, and getting into that field uh, all the more uh, from that side of it. That's amazing. I think that's so much fun. I think you know being able to produce projects is kind of the best, in my opinion, because you get to make up what you're going to do. You get oh, to yeah. make up what it's about and who you want to make it with, and you know it's kind of like the creator sort of position, which is really a lot of fun, I think. And you learn to not be lazy about anything because as an actor, when you book a project, you can actually, if you want to, rest on your laurels a little bit and be like, I just got to show up. I just got to perform. It's easy. And being an actor, frankly, is easy in the actual doing of it. The acting is so freaking easy. If you want to make something go right. Not everybody would agree, but. Maybe not, but I just. You, obviously it comes naturally to I you. I think it's just a piece of cake. People, people behind the camera always said, oh my god, I could never do what you do. I could never do that. And I'm like, you have to lift like these 2,000 pound lights back and forth all day. That's a difficult job. I get waited on and I get doted upon all day, then I show up and talk into a piece of glass and I get paid 15 times what you do. I have the cushiest freaking job on the planet. That's easy. What you do behind the camera is hard. And in production, you learn that this actually takes work. <laughs> and it takes a lot of work, especially if you're, you're managing everything, you're controlling everything and what have you. You're ultimately responsible for how everything goes. Mm -hmm. As an actor, I'm not. Yeah. If something goes wrong, it's the producer's fault. I didn't do it. But if you're in charge, everything is your fault. And that's been an incredible lesson to learn. Yes. I, I obviously have, have some experience with that because I produce this show. Certainly. So everything you know, floats up to me. If it doesn't work out on whatever we're trying to do, then it's like, how did I not you know, make that you know, in the end come down to me? How did I not make that work or whatever? And it's a constant learning process. So anyways, I think it's so cool because this is such a great field to be in, especially right now with all of the technology that's out there. And oh, yeah. Entertainment, the way it's just evolving. You know, it's really opened the door for people who are willing to kind of go the extra mile and put, put that time in and put that work in, you know? So. And all the time, there's all these new technologies coming forward that allow people on a relatively shoestring budget to make some really incredible stuff. You see these, uh, these, these things people are inventing on like the gyroscopic uh, steady cam rigs and whatnot. Uh, compared to what it would cost to have proper dolly shots and do the whole deal, it's nowhere near as expensive and Boy, does the, do the shots just look amazing. We have so many opportunities now to make good stuff. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. Uh, to make great stuff. <laughs> and 
do it in a way that you can be an indie film. I just ruined that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, Insert fart sound right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the booth, guys. It's ladder. Come on. Uh, All right. Uh, but yeah, we have so many opportunities now to create so much high quality stuff being completely indie without having to rely on a studio and doing it ourselves. And that's what the industry, in my opinion, has been lacking. I think we've all dealt with, especially actors, the bean counters at studios mm. who can sometimes get in the way. You know, yes, it has to be profitable. The project has to be profitable. But sometimes the uh, obsession with finance and having that one guy way up there who has completely nothing to do with the creative process, deciding how you are allowed to make your stuff can really get in the way. Totally. And now we're able to break free of that, which is awesome. Totally, I totally agree. I used to be um, in like independent film, like sort of in the financing part, like part of it. And I would just be shocked at the rules that they had for like, for, for green lighting. A oh, movie, yeah. like how many gunshots, how many sex scenes. Like they had like an actual equation and, and nothing else mattered. And then it was just so not genuine. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And then. But also, some shows can take a while to start picking up. Like, you might give it a little chance, you know? Instead of just, if it doesn't take off right away, then, then put, it, put an end to it. And I think that's, that's, um, that's actually starting to happen a lot more. Like, people are being able to get that runway time and not just cut stuff off right away because some money, you know, person says, no, no, if it doesn't happen right, right in the first series, in the first, you know, season, then, then it's over. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And so. it... The, the whole bean counting uh, philosophy, that whole culture, is not a direct indicator of quality by any means. It's not. You see some great projects come about, some great films hit the theaters that took forever to get made because nobody wanted to do it. In fact, that's probably the ones that are the good ones. Uh, yeah, a lot of the time, those are some of the best. And the ones that some, some of them that have huge amounts of, of budget are just ridiculous, honestly. Even though often profitable, they are garbage. <laughs> I don't mean to but be like the marketing. The, the marketing critic. is a big part of it, though. What, oh like yeah. What you're what you're doing and how many people get, get, even hear about it is a huge, huge, huge part of it. So yeah, that's really cool that you're doing that. Totally. Yeah. Anyways, I just we don't have a lot of time. I would actually keep talking to you for another couple hours, so we have to wrap it up. But um, it's been really cool to have you on the show. And it's been cool to be here. Thank you. I look forward to having you back again after you've done some of those 15 pilots. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so that would be very cool. So thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching Vince Casso on The Red Booth.